onto something. Uh, if you try to go to the Corbin building and you're, every time you want to make a change, you've got to go to the MTA and ask them, gee, could I have another 100 square feet? Uh, you know, they'll say, well, I've got to go to the governor. Uh, you know, wait till the next election. Uh, uh, or I need an environmental impact state to do that. Uh, it could be anything. Uh, so you know, I think, again, these are some of the issues that have to be thought about in terms of the, the physical nature of this. I would just like to build on Lynn's idea because I think it's excellent. And obviously having a changing exhibition space as part of whatever ultimate space you have is great. But what would be really cool is because George will need to start somewhere. <laughs> we will have to define, I mean, this is such an enormous project as we talk about it, that there will have to be some starting place. And whatever starting place that is, um, as you mount each of these exhibitions, that is essentially an opportunity to build yet another layer into what he's done there. Yeah, so, like, say th that you started with uh, the Stokes uh, uh, Castello plan or whatever, and then you decide that you're going to do a whole exhibit on uh, the fur trade and the roots of the Hudson. Well, obviously, the, the day that you launch that exhibit is the day that you launch it on the website is the day that you blast every single fourth and seventh grade teacher so that it keeps building and there's a reason not only for people to come back to the physical site but there's a reason for people to come back to the website so you continually are building something more and more yeah i'd just like to also um, add that when you when we spoke the last time i also envision something a little bit more than just a virtual museum of uh, creating an environment, for example, a home, uh, uh, a New Netherland home, or uh, something of that nature, to engage children or engage people uh, to be able to uh, participate. And another idea I just had would be perhaps a, uh, a, a screening room where you have, I've seen this in museums, or stand up, you know, or you have bunches, whatever huge, you know, screen, IMAX type thing, but not that big, where you, where you can project some of this on, you have it move, have, have a voiceover, have, uh, uh, you know, maybe even a back and, maybe there's some way to even have a dialogue, I don't know, where you have 50 people in the room at the same time, or 40 kids, uh, something large, something big. I mean, so the city of New York has that, you know, history of the city. Yeah. They want a little room just enough benches to maybe hold 30, but yeah. uh, visual becomes nothing like what Len <laughs> is doing with New Amsterdam. I'm just thinking of how it's a popular exhibit, but if you do exhibit, but if you do it with this, that's why I, I, I just, I know I, we, we're all New Amsterdam, New Netherlands, but we got a couple, 300 years, there's, there's just so many connecting points. I've seen it, it's, you know, it's surround, it's surround yeah. kind of thing. I've seen it in Europe, I think, where, I mean, you're in the middle of the French Revolution or something, and you feel like you're really in it. Well, wouldn't it be wonderful if you get the theater department to get interested in this particular period? Because there's or filming. <coughs> so much. Maybe Robert De Niro. No, there's, a, there's a, a major Dutch playwright. Uh, so you know Tom Forstenbos? Yeah. I met with him <laughs> two Sundays <laughs> ago. <laughs> Uh, he's very well known in the Netherlands. He wants to put on a spectacular in Manhattan in 2009. Sort of interviewing Stuyvesant, interviewing famous people of the Netherlands, and wants to all to be historically accurate, but he wants to really draw a crowd. He staged uh, in a very professional uh, way. And he's very serious about it. And uh, just from <laughs> also, remember the idea that was thrown out by Len who we, that was about the American doll place? Yeah. To create a doll, dolls. A Dutch doll. Yeah, apparently, yeah. this is a, the little girls, and yeah. I don't have any business. Oh, yeah. I mean, to get that company to create dolls to go with this this whole project. Dolls in the house. Oh, yeah. the American girl. American girl. American girl. Yeah. 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 Right, and apparently they're very authentic, historically oh, yeah. accurate, and so on. They're expensive. I mean, they're authentic. They're expensive. They have movies. They have books. They, I mean, it's like a they have beach. So we could create a whole American girl. Huge events. <laughs> <laughs> That's really the purpose of this meeting: is to think entrepreneurially. I mean, in order to be successful, you got to have a product. You get get them involved, and I'm sure they. 
They could do an Indian doll. Eighteen <laughs> was eighteen <laughs> 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 Of, of 